Five-minute penalty to Chicago, a game misconduct, and then Manson having words with Steven. And now, Butcher gets into it. We're going to have a brawl, folks. Stand by. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Tyler Cash here with Fourth Line Goon, chatting with my bud, defenseman Nate Schmidt. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. Hey, Fourth Line Goon, you even got the scruff and everything. Hey, if you're going to be the part, you might as well look the part, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I got my hair tied up, too. Yeah. I got, the, I got the, the, the prison tats going, right? It's, yeah, fit, the, fit the, uh, the mold just a little bit. But um, appreciate you, you coming on and talking with me. I know we've been chatting now for a few weeks about uh, your company that you've got going, which we'll, we'll get into as well. And I, I know camp is just right around the corner, so I really appreciate you finding time uh, to sit down right before you get into that grind. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when does that start up? Yeah, we're looking at Wednesday. Uh, we're looking at just a few days from here. We're, uh, we're pretty much all systems go here now. I mean, I, at this time of year, all the guys, you, you can start to see that type of uneasiness and edginess about, all right, let's just get going. I, I want to get body fat done. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to get that out of the way it's like yeah if you have any testing like gotta get that out of the way and then you should see the wednesday night meals for guys it's gotta be through the roof like i'm talking ice cream and food that gets all the things you haven't eaten in a long time all come out on wednesday night right after a bad body fat test happens <laughs> you know that's funny i was gonna say like because you you mentioned before we we chatted on on this uh group chat that uh, you you've been haven't played with the team with a team since you said what was it April yeah, April yeah it's been about five months that's we had our own little mini series against Calgary after year after the playoffs had started in Vancouver I don't know if anybody saw that I'm guessing not a lot of people did but yeah it was uh, it was some of the more interesting hockey I've had in my career we were playing those makeup games where both teams are out of the playoffs and all the other <laughs> playoff games are going on so. Yeah, it was, uh, let's just say, I've, been, I've had better moments, I feel like, as a hockey player. <laughs> it was more exciting than I expected, though, considering yeah. neither team was really playing for anything. So Yeah, I, there was a lot of young guys playing, so I think that obviously helps a lot, too. Um, and I think guys were just excited, too, about – it was a long year. I'm so excited that we're past where we were last year. I mean, not playing in front of fans is, is not fun. I didn't enjoy it one bit. I mean, even like you date back to the bubble, it's just we're playing the playoffs. It just doesn't feel like a playoff game. You know, and that's what makes it hard for players. I mean, that, I mean, for me, like, I, I, I love energy. I love good, you know, like a, that good feeling when you come in the rink and the rink's buzzing from people being inside. I, I think it's so cool to have that type of energy. And when you don't have that and you rely on that and you get in, it's just like, Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got to get it. We got to get it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, it, just, it's, it's not, the, not at all the same, especially coming from T-Mobile, you know, in the atmosphere in Vegas. And and then, you know, then we have the whole pandemic and everyone has to go to a bubble to kind of finish off the year after that gap. I, I did notice that the teams that were actually performing well were the ones that were juicing each other up, like getting real riled, riled up on the bench and yelling a bunch, and you could kind of hear it. But, I mean, nothing's going to compare to, like, a full 18,000, 20,000 people watching, you know, the you know the atmosphere is just unmatched. Um, yeah, especially, especially at T-Mobile, like you said. Like, think about – like, I even think back to, like, uh, like, our first year. It was the first time I've ever felt the bench rumble, <laughs> like, in between, like, <clears throat> TV timeouts, when the music was playing, you're like, why is my butt shaking? <laughs> why, why, what's going on here right now? And then, I don't know if they put like speakers or subwoofers underneath the bench, but yeah, nothing can replace that. That's for sure. Well, let's, let's start from the very beginning. Uh, so obviously you played in the NHL with a handful of teams now, the Washington Capitals, the Vegas Golden Knights, the Canucks, the Winnipeg Jets now uh, is where you're at right now in Winnipeg. Um, but uh, an interesting part of your story is that you went undrafted. Uh, you, you signed with the Washington Capitals in 2013 after a few monstrous seasons at the University of Minnesota. In 2011, it looks like you put up 41 points in 43 games. 2012, you put up another 32 points in 40 games. You're a defenseman. I mean, these are impressive numbers even for a forward. Um, 
But the question is, what was it like, uh, you know, going undrafted? I mean, were you expecting to be drafted? Were there teams that you thought were interested? Um, you know, I think it's, it says a lot about your character that you've been grinding since day one. Tell us a little bit about the process with that. Well, it's, it's been a riot, man. It's been uh, – when you look at where it was from the very beginning, I thought I was getting drafted. I mean, I was – you know, <clears throat> you know, people – when you're growing up and you you know you, things are going well as a player, people are telling you, "Oh man, you're you're so this, you're that," and you know I think you're going to get drafted and it's going to be great. And I, I just you know I wasn't really prepared for the low of not being drafted, and that's what happened, right? I went through my high school season. I thought I was going to get drafted. I got hurt, um, and I thought, "Oh, you know, it shouldn't matter that much." And then sure enough, draft day comes and goes, and day one, day two, and all of a sudden nothing happens, and I was devastated. I thought, man, I'm never going to make it. Like, no one – if you're not drafted, you're not going to make it. Um, you know, start looking into how – you know, when I got to when I got to college, I got to the University of Minnesota, I, my, my first year I was, like, the only – one or two of the under, only undrafted guys, right? And so it was, it was difficult. And then as I started kind of realizing it doesn't really matter, if, as long as I just go out there and do my thing, if I can play the way I want to play and be the kind of player that I think I can be, well, then it's not going to matter. And – and I, unfortunately for me, you know, I had a couple of good last two years there um, at school. That it actually worked out on the flip side. It actually worked out a lot better where I was able to pick as an undrafted guy where I wanted to play. And George McPhee uh, was in Washington at the time. And, and uh, I'll never forget what, I, what he told me after my sophomore year. He's like, hey, we want to sign you, but you should go back. You have a really good team your junior year. Eric Hall is there. Uh, Nick Bukestad was there, Kyle Rao. I mean, we had a really good uh, – Brady Shea was going to – you know, Brady Shea, Mike Riley. A lot of guys that play in the NHL now were all on this team. They're like, go back. You're going to have a great uh, – have an awesome time. And he was the only guy that told me that. Everyone else was, hey, you know, you got to come. You got to sign. Like, come on, let's get you out. You got you know, to you know, become a pro in order to keep going. Um, and sure enough, the next year came by, and I just I had a lot of respect for him for that. And and uh, I, you know, and that's and that's where I wanted to be. And so it was really cool. It ended up coming full circle, but it sure as hell didn't feel that way <laughs> at the very beginning when it didn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, were uh, did you ever ask McPhee why the hell you weren't drafted? Then, if he was interested <laughs> in you, did that conversation <laughs> ever come up? No, I, it's fine. I never asked him. I think. I mean, man, this was. Oh, four years after I would have been drafted, you know, I think that's probably, I think I was a little bit of a late bloomer. I, I, I was really, I'm about the same size, same of like give or take 10 pounds, maybe a half inch that I was when I was like 14. So I was about 5'10", 5'11", um, 180 pounds as like an eighth grader. And so I didn't really work on a lot of my game because I was just physically more mature than a lot of the guys. So, um, I just think that uh, it just took me a while to kind of find, you know, because the game has changed so much even from when I was playing high school and where I am now, even from when I got to pro. Um, you know, the first year I played was still touch icing, the clutching and grabbing, guys grabbing, you know, hooking guys around on, on icings and forwards, you know, grabbing guys as they go by. So the game has changed quite a bit even since I've been a pro. Um, and so <clears throat> games change, you got to adapt, you know. I, I love – you know, I'm a big money ball guy. I love Billy Bean. I'm a big adapt or die guy. And so I got to find a way to adapt. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, after uh, four seasons with the Capitals, you were left exposed by the team in the 2017 NHL expansion draft. Obviously, a lot of people listening to this know you went on to play for the Vegas Golden Knights. So this is another situation, kind of what you were talking about early on, where there was a level of uncertainty. Um, you hear a lot of players these days don't really know where they're going to be the next day. When it came to this expansion draft, did you have a vibe? Did you have a gut instinct or even a heads up that you might have possibly been taken? Obviously, you mentioned McPhee was involved. So, uh, yeah, what, did, did you have any idea? Yeah. So I did at the very, very end. The, at, the, at the beginning, during most of the year, it was they're taking Groovy. Philip Grubauer, they're taking Philip Grubauer, they're taking Philip Grubauer. There was just <clears> – <throat> Dave Pryor was in Washington, uh, the new Grubi. That was the guy, right? So a whole year, that's what everyone was talking about. I mean – and then I played in the playoffs late because Carl Alsner got hurt, had a good playoff series, 
um, John Carlson and I played together. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, there might be a chance. And there might be a chance. And about a week before, it was every other day. It was like, they're taking you. Nope, they're taking Ruby. The, the, my agent would call me. Like, nope, they're taking you again. Nope, they're taking Ruby. And I said, don't call me until you know for sure. I don't, I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, at about 1030 in the morning, the day of the expansion draft is when I got the call saying that I was um, going to be <clears> – <throat> That, that was it. That was being unprotected, and there was a good chance I was taken. Brian Colonna called me and just said, Hey, I think they're taking you. I just no, I really appreciate everything. He said, We tried to make a deal, but it just, it just was, well, it's just not going to work. So, uh, I was coaching a hockey camp in the middle of a game, and I got a call from George McPhee, and I was like, I got to run off the bench, guys. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, George ended up telling me that day, and, and then everything came out that night. So, I think I was one of the last guys for it to leak out on because I they kind of had already a lot of the guys you know the trades with Florida and Minnesota all those things were already started have already came out the trade with Florida with Garrison and Gusev all those things that started coming out down the pipe um, and so I actually think uh, yeah it was you know Philip and I a group out and I were talking back and forth like one one will know the other one will know so I called him as soon as I was over just to give him a heads up I think it was the the pro thing to do. So, were you, were you yeah. excited? I mean, was it? Were you anticipating this? Is this a move you wanted? Were you nervous? Can we bottle all those into all of the above? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was nervous. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm going like a perennial president's trophy winning team to an expansion team. It had nothing to do with. I was like, man, like we just got done winning. 150 games over the last two years, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's going to be a little different, but I knew Eric Holler was going already. Um, cause he had called me and let me know a couple days in advance. Cause that, that deal was done in advance. Um, another, and, Minnesota, another Minnesota guy, right? Yeah. 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 Him and I, Hall and I played together, um, at school. And so, yeah, it was, yeah, I was like, well, you know what though? We're going to Vegas. That's sweet. You know, like that. I go, that's going to be really great. But, you know, I wonder what our team's going to be like. And when you looked at it, like, our whole team was pretty much on one-year contracts. I mean, pretty much everybody. Uh, outside, I think, myself, like, Shea Theodore, Tucky. But, like, Tucky and Jay weren't even on the team this time of year because we had too many guys, which is wild. I don't know if a lot of people remember that. Like, those two guys weren't even on the team with the first two months of the year, which yeah. is crazy because, I mean, obviously, see what those guys are like now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it was uh, – it was a lot of emotion, but you know, once I got there, it, you know, once I got to Vegas, it just made it. It was just, you know, Barry Schrotz told me like you'll never have so much fun as you do that first year because you just kind of get to build it with everybody, and that's what we did that first year, which was really fun. And got to do a lot of, you know, things that you'll always be able to say, yeah, I was on the first ever team, which is pretty cool. And that's actually a perfect leeway for my next question. I mean, <laughs> obviously, a magical year. Um, I didn't even live in Vegas at the time yet. I was still in St. Louis, Missouri, but I like jumped, I jumped the bandwagon right away. <laughs> I was like so into the hype. Um, I was at that actual, the inaugural season home opener. I was there at T-Mobile for the expansion draft at the NHL awards. Uh, yeah, yeah it, we got to like sit down. We were part of like the seat fillers. So we got to like sit on the ground, like with the players, like Gretzky That's and – Crosby and actually McDavid was like right in front of us and like at that point I mean he was hype but like now I'm like thinking that's that's crazy you know the best player yeah for sure right um and you know beautiful season man it was just absolutely a, a magical run and uh it wouldn't feel right interviewing you without without bringing that up obviously um wh where I have it's kind of a two-part question for me what is your favorite memory of that first year and then the second part of that is what was like the turning point? When was like the moment when you were like, oh shit, like we are a contender, like this is fun and we're a good team? Yeah, I, I think uh, actually I got to do something about it. just being at that, uh, you know, the first ever game in the home opener. Um, I mean, playing the first two games were cool. Like playing in Dallas and playing in Arizona, that was cool, right? You're, like, you're playing. But then after everything that happened in Vegas, uh, everything that the community went through um, with October 1, and to come back and listen to Ango, you know, Derek, to his speech, 
and come out and win a game um, at home was is it, like it's it was incredible. I, I you couldn't have scripted it any better for what we need at the time for as a team as a community. So that was something that gives me you know you know it just gives me a lot of emotion thinking about it. Um, but I would say that uh, probably. Like End of November, early December. I I remember Jonathan Marshall was walking into the rink. He's like, <laughs> we had one, I think, like three or four in a row, and yeah, I can't remember what we were doing. I think we were going to do something that night. He walks in and goes, "Are we good? Like, <laughs> are we good?" Like, I, don't know. I remember everyone just like bursting out laughing. They were like, "Yeah, I mean, I think so. I don't know. Like, has anyone been paying attention to the standings or like anything? Or like, oh no, not really." And uh, I just remember just kind of sitting there with Brayden McNabb and, and Lucas Beeson just being like, huh, yeah, I guess we are kind of good. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. And then you guys are to, to conclude that, uh, that question. is When did we really know? I would say after, um, like, early January is when guys started looking around and be like, guys, we're actually, like, kind of doing this. So let's just continue. Let's keep doing it. You know, like, we're good. Like, let's keep being good. and. That's how we rolled it the rest of the year. It was like, we're actually good now, you guys, so don't worry. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, so, never let it, you never let it go to your head. It seemed like uh, the pressure didn't really feel on until that, you know, the Stanley Cup final, that, you know, yes. that final round. Um, and not to kind of – not to dull it down a little bit, but I feel like it wouldn't be right to ask you, losing to your team that you just came from, okay? Yeah. While you're playing them, what is going through your head? What What is the emotion? Are you – is there, like, a, a level of aggression towards them because they're your previous team? Or were you still, like, kind of happy to see these guys perform well and, and win? I mean, you had been playing with them for four seasons prior. I mean, I'm sure even today you probably still haven't wrapped your head around how you feel about that, um, and which is fine. But – I guess at the time and then having time to reflect, what is your thought process for that final series against the Washington Capitals? Yeah, you know what? It was hard. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, you know, because you are in the middle of playing against the guys that you just came – you just got done playing with. And, and it was – it was – oh, man. It's hard to kind of get your – that's I think when it's really kind of got to us and not got to us, but got us thinking like, wow, we're actually here. Like this is the final. We just had kind of put our head down and played, you know, hummed our way through a tough LA series, you know, grind our way out through a San Jose series, you know, contrary to what people think our Winnipeg series was actually, we got waxed the first game. And that kind of was when we were like, ah, we may have just hit our, we may have just hit it here after we got waxed in the first game of Winnipeg. And then we won the next two games and we we're like, ah, I was went to more, and then we'll, we'll get going, and then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, media day, Stanley Cup, what's happening? But I think, you know, after it all said and done, you know, it sucks that you, you couldn't win. And I, I was happy, you know, like Braden Holpe, like a guy that I grew up with, like in Washington. He's awesome, one of my best friends. Um, I was happy, you know, like as we look back, you know, this last year I played with him just being like, man, like it was just, if I had to do it, I'm happy it was you. You know what I mean? I was happy that you were the guy. Um, it pisses me off, but I'm happy it was <laughs> you, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the way, I, the best way to describe it. I mean, I still look back and it's, it's hard because it's gut-wrenching. But at the same time, you kind of just think about our team and our success that year and, and uh, just kind of look at it from that point of view, not the other side. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because obviously it's the most successful expansion story in the history of sports. That's something that I don't see anybody touching for a very long time unless the Kraken wind up coming out of left field again. And then, and then in which case, we're like, whoa, holy shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, not, not, hey, let's just say this. Our guy, everyone knows, like, no one's taking this team lightly after what had happened. <laughs> right, yeah. I think everybody's watching what they're doing because they don't want to wind up being one of the quotes on the ice. Like, yeah. uh, like you guys had everything. Welcome to Impossible. You, you know, the, the story was just beautiful, man. It was, it was a fun, uh, a fun run uh, that ended too short. But I mean, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about more current events. Um, recently, you were traded to the Winnipeg Jets from the Vancouver Canucks. Short run there. Um, 
I, man, you know, before I even finish this question, did you ever play a game in Vancouver in front of fans? No. Wow. What, what, uh, it, on the road. <laughs> yeah, but never in. No. That's, that's some weird thing that you're going to look back on years from now and be like, yeah, I mean, I played for the Canucks, but like the fans no weren't. No one ever saw me play? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's, that's wild. Um, it but you know. up to another part of the weird year, you know. It's just a weird year for everybody. And I'm hoping that we're, in, we're looking into it, put that, you know, in the rear view because – not playing with all fans. Thanks. It's not fun. <laughs> no, and you, you know, you you build off that atmosphere as we as we were talking about before. But you know, as somebody that was you know stuck at home in quarantine and lives for hockey, breathes hockey, we really appreciate you guys doing that. You know, putting your lives on the line, your health on the line, and actually grinding it out, whether or not there are fans there or not. You had people at home cheering for you. Which yeah. is, you know, so we really appreciate that. But, um, you know, you were traded to the Winnipeg Jets uh, from the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, obviously, you'll be reunited, uh, reunited with former teammate Paul Stasny, uh, which is exci- exciting. But are there any other uh, guys on that roster that you've chatted with that maybe you're looking forward to playing with? Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about how excited you are for this team. Yeah, you know what, I – we played against this team, right? You know, a couple of when I was in Vegas, played against this team. It was, you know, outside of the defense core, it's essentially the same ish team, right? Um, you know, you swap in uh, Dubois for Patrick Laine. Yeah, I think it's a big change up front. Um, but other than that, you know, I think it's you're still the same goaltender. is a great goaltender and, um, and Hellebuck. And honestly, the most – looking back to that series, the most exciting thing about our series against Winnipeg when I was in Vegas was Flower and Hellebuck. Like how good those two guys were in that series. It was insane. And so if you now you get a chance to play with a guy that is, you know is a world-class goaltender, I think that's exciting. Um, you know, a guy like Josh Morrissey is like, you know, he's been a, you know, such a solid defender in our league for, you know, the last couple of years too. I, I'm, I'm excited about our decor. You know, I, we all kind of know what the, you know, the forwards, in my opinion, with the Jets, they got a lot of speed, and Kyle Connor, and the Ehlers. Um, you know, Shifley Wheeler, you know, you got guys that can wheel and deal and make plays. Uh, but I think the cool part is our D this year has got a lot of um a lot of flexibility within our group, right? Have a lot of guys moving here and there. And you have Brennan Dillon um, you know, to the to the fold with me as well. Uh, and I think it's it's something that you can add and having that flexibility to the group, it really kind of brings a lot. And that's what that's what I'm most excited about. And then, you know, Logan Stanley, I don't and the thing is I don't know if a lot of people know so you know down, you know, in the, in the States or because all the stuff in Canada last year was just in Canada. You know, I didn't even see any games or States games last year up in Canada. It was just essentially just showing Canadian games and big, tall, six, seven D man. Like he's huge. He's massive. I stand next to him. I was like, I sit next to him in my, in my <laughs> stall. His shin pads are this much bigger than mine. Like from my knee, like they're literally, I looked at him today. I was like, yeah, he's an absolute massive human being. Like, it's kind of cool to have a guy of that stature on your team too. It's kind of a nice little, you know, thing to have, him, you know? And so that's the only thing I'm most excited about for this year. Yeah. I mean, I, as you were talking about this, I haven't even realized you've played with some amazing defensemen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And, oh, and yeah. You, you've held your own through all that, man, which I mean, you should feel really good about that. Cause like you were just listing off all these names. And I was like, Holy shit you have played with these guys, like, yeah. especially even with Vancouver last year. I mean, considering like such a young, you know, um, aspiring uh, group of dudes on D that you, like you hear their names constantly. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's exciting, man. I, I, uh, as you mentioned, Winnipeg is, uh, they've been that team that's been slowly kind of evolving, but, you know, stayed a lot of the same, a lot of tall dudes, man, like a yeah, big, big team. We're, yeah, we, big have, team. we have a big team. It's, it's fun. It's, it's fun to play, anyway, especially when you're – I'm not like a small guy, but I feel small in our room sometimes. You're next to Lowry and Stanley and these guys and Dubois. Like, I'm like, dear God, like Wheeler. I'm like, you guys are massive. You know, Dylan, too. Like, yeah, they're just big human beings. It's, it's, it's cool. It's, it's fun to be around. So, yeah, uh, as we mentioned uh, previously earlier in this podcast, uh, recently you've unveiled your involvement with uh, Short Side Co., uh, Hockey yeah. Tape, and Apparel. Um, Tell us a little bit about that, man. I think it's really exciting when uh, athletes get involved with these companies and not just to make money, 
not just to like, you yeah. know, make a pretty penny on the side, but also to, you know, look for your future. And it, it, you, you really marketed your, uh, your brand as hockey players, like, or yeah, hockey players providing for players. Yeah, instead for players of, by players. Yeah. yeah, that's what it, yeah, that's what it was. And, and uh, so tell us a little bit about that. You mentioned you have this company with some old friends from Minnesota. Let's, let's chat about it. Yeah. You know what? It's, it was really cool. So last year, my best friend, um, financial guy, uh, he was coaching with, uh, you know, a Bantam team. And one of the guys with him, he's like, Hey, you know, I started up this small little tape company. It's always been my dream. Um, and, you know, trying to get something, uh, that's really great into associations and have like a, you know, like a Tom's shoes type of, uh, you know, motto to it. Right. And, you know, and how we, you know, we get into associations and they can sell it and use it however they want just to get to use their profits to go back into their price time or they can donate it and whatnot. So it was a really cool motto of how we, they wanted to do it. Right. And, and be like that Costco type wholesaler to associations and to pro shops and things like that. And just be like a, just be really good at tape. Right. Just, really good and, and, and having a really good product. And so my buddy started sending me something. Like, hey, do you mind trying it out? I said, yeah, no problem. This is before I was even involved in it. So I said, yeah, no problem. And so I would take it up for practice and four or five batches into it. Uh, and I was like, oh man, like we're not, uh, we're not too good right now. Um, they got our, uh, it's just not really a great product yet. So, you know, batch six and seven, we started to finally get something that we were liking. And, and then the last one we, we got, um, you know, Alex Edler and myself and, and Bowie Horvat tried it a few times uh, and started using it with like, Edler and I were using it for games. And I was like, dude, this stuff's pretty good. Like, I like it. And then it got to the last batch. I was like, I really like it. I'll use this. And sure enough, nothing really came of that. And I just told him, like, yeah, I'll keep trying if you want me to or if you need guys. And when I came home um, from the year, they asked me to come on board as this, uh, as somebody like, hey, you just mind, you know, do we use, you know, connections here and there and help us with, you know, with the tape and if it, feels good because that's a big thing and right it's, it's it's just being able to to feel it right and having yeah yeah <laughs> you just pulled it right out of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> uh, i love it you know what i always like being able to feel it and whatnot and I, I always thought to you know for myself um you know feel is always a huge thing uh you know with tape and not having it you know fray off on the sides because that's a huge thing for me i hate when that happens and so I've gone through 26 rolls now and I haven't had a frill on the outside, which has been pretty awesome. Um, and I, you know, I just, I love the other guys, the other guys that were in it. So we've been on board. I've been calling associations, high school coaches. And I'm like, Hey, this is Nate Schmidt. And they're like, what are you doing calling me? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> what do, what do you, you want? Mean? Like, do you want to ski? <laughs> like look at price time. I'm like, no, I'm trying to sell you some tape. And it's now nah, it's been really fun. And we got into, uh, I mean, man, like it's it's kind of blowing it's blowing up a little bit, right? Like Van Riemsdijk, James Van Riemsdijk took it out to Philly. Bogosian took it down to Tampa. I got it up here. Um, I was trying to get well, and our start our stocks were running low like a couple of weeks ago because we were, I got a couple of universities and colleges up in Minnesota plus a bunch of um, you know a couple uh, pro shops and such. It, it's been it's been fun. It's been a lot harder, you know. Just it, it, you had to take a crash course and how to do things again. Like that's what I went to school for, but still, I mean, I called my college professor and my sales trainer. I was like, I need a 30 minute crash course on everything you taught me for the last day for six months of college. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it's been a lot of fun. It's cool. It's got a great logo. Uh, I don't even really know if you can see the logo from there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah no, I love that. It's like the four the four rolls of tape. Like yeah, I, four I, rolls of tape, eighty eight short side. You know, and it just so happened that I were eighty eight too. Like it couldn't have been a match. Better oh my god, I didn't I didn't even put that together. That's I love that. So the the two guys that started were both born in eighty eight, and they were buddies from growing up. And then my buddy and I had jumped on board too. So it's uh, it's been really fun just to you bounce ideas off guys and this and that. And I mean. Thankfully, my fiance has been really great at helping us with some design stuff, with rally. Uh, but yeah, it's been really cool. We're we're we got a lot of momentum right now. Um, I think I've sold like 20, 25 cases in the last two and a half weeks. So I'm pretty jazzed up, hoping to keep trending. 
working on my sales pitch. <laughs> yeah, I, I love how enthusiastic about it and you are. And, and that's kind of why you're probably seeing success. When I messaged the company, I saw something you posted on Instagram. And I was like, hey, like, I, let's get involved. Like, I love this because I'm a hockey player as well. And, you know, we run this hockey podcast. Like, what's up? And you're like, hey, it's Schmitty. And I was like, I was like, okay, it's not normal uh, for the face of the company to be answering the Instagram. But, dude, that's uh, I'm from I'm from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. You're from Minnesota. That's the like that's the Midwest grind, dude. That's what you have. I feel like that's a thing, and and that shows through product, and it shows through company mottos and just work ethic, and kind of goes into that whole grinding thing, man. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, the company's great, man. I, we love to support it. You know, we're going to try to support it any way we can, dude. Awesome. Yeah. And here's the thing too. It's, it's just been, like you said, like we were talking before. Like, yeah. I mean, making money. Yeah. I, don't, I think we've, I think we've paid for our last order. Like we're not really, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to build ourselves, right. And getting, we've got some new launches coming out here, uh, a hat, you know, some, you know, a new hat. That's going to be sweet. I'm pretty excited about it. But like, we get to go to these, you know, these shops and look at the, you know, apparel stuff and get to touch it and feel it and design it from the ground up. It's so cool to be a part of this stuff. It's hard. It's a lot of work, but it's been really fun to just, I mean, as you've gone through this podcast, you, it's, you grind, but it's a lot of fun to do it and see where it gets to. And when you send out a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a stack of tape, you're like, man, like, that's awesome. Like that's, that's one of, you know, hopefully one of more, you know, many, many more. And, you know, when I make a sale, we, we put it in our, or if someone makes a sale, it doesn't matter who it is in our group, we put it in our group chat and everyone's all jazzed out. There's fireworks <laughs> going. So, you know, there's some, uh, maybe some explicit things said, but other than that, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it gets the guys fired up. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's, 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 it's like selling, dude. It's like selling a goal, but like you, you're <laughs> creating, you're creating something, you know, like yeah. I, I grew up a musician my whole life. And, and so I've always been a creator and then I, I kind of stepped away from it for a little bit and, and did the regular life grind. But then we, we really had to keep doing the podcast cause it feels good. It feels good to, yeah. to chat about things you love and to, and to watch it grow and watch it do awesome, awesome shit. And, um, I think that's what a lot of big companies lack. Like his character yeah. and just uh, a, a true, genuine passion. It's like no matter how big uh, that company will get, you'll still have that initial Midwest grinder, <laughs> big heart vibe. I don't know. I, I, no, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Maybe I, that's just what I'm thinking. We drive. We drive. I mean, obviously, it'd be a little bit harder um, if we would get stuff in Vegas. Uh, but people would be excited about it. But we've been driving tape to people. Like we get in the car and like hammer like if a college visor, a high school or something. Like we're there. Like I'm sitting there. Like I sit there dropping tape off. Like I <laughs> you see when you walk in the door. <laughs> you know we're sling, We call it slinging tape. Slinging yeah. tape today. So and um, it's fun, right? It's fun. It, yeah. it doesn't seem like a job. No, it's. I mean, man, I, we just had a lot of fun just being. Uh, you know, it's it's great tape. Um, you know, I, I like to put it up there against any of the other you know any other tapes out there um because guys are liking it and people always want to feel like they know who's who it is like you have a chance to say hey i know that guy or we've met before you know i actually sold me some tape yeah 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 you know like uh, whatever yeah. however it goes i mean the hockey community is so small that that uh you really can intertwine and intermix with people and, and someone will always know somebody that's what i love about the hockey community is that you know you and i could chat today and you know have five other connections between in the hockey world you know just from guys we've played with or grown up with to, you know, anything. So that, and that's what makes it fun to be a part of the hockey world, you know, just outside of the game as well. And we'll be sure to, to share all the, the social medias, the websites on how you guys can get your hands on this tape. Uh, I, yep, there it is. There it is. Uh, so, yeah, you can either uh, hit up Short Side uh, Co. on Instagram. We'll, we'll include all that all that uh, with this episode. We're, we're very much excited to be involved with that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, when we, before we wrap up this interview, I, thank you so much for coming on this, man. It's it's just been a blast. Once again, it's just rad talking hockey, shooting the shit. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. but so I, I end these episodes with like I call them like fun questions, like short okay. little quick guys. It may not be completely involved with hockey, but the element, okay. you know, the vibe is there, right? All right, uh, yeah, yeah. all right. What do you got? Uh, so I'm I'm curious to know your answer to this because. Uh -oh. 
every guest so far has given the exact same answer. I, I, should, I should have told you that because I feel like now you're going to be thinking a little bit too hard. But what is the greatest hockey movie of all time? Miracle. Okay. That, is, that you were the first person to not have the answer of Slapshot. <laughs> Slapshot was the go-to, and I've always combated it with Miracle. Fucking phenomenal movie. I love it. <laughs> I mean, you know what's funny? Actually, <clears throat> Nick Holden's wife, and loves the movie. I'm like, you're Canadian. She goes, yeah, I just pretend that the U.S. is Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I awesome. I was, like, I was like, that is the answer of the day. That's awesome. I love it. I'm like, hey, whatever you got to do. I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable flick. I, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, it gives you all kinds of it, – it gives you goosebumps. It, yeah, it gives you all types of feels. Yeah. All types of feels. Uh, okay, so um, – you said you were from uh, from Minnesota. Is that where is it? You born and raised Minnesota? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, favorite hockey team and or player growing up? Like, what was like? Who was the player? Who was the team that like got you into hockey? It's there's two of them. It's, it's Nicholas Lidstrom is my all time favorite. I'm a I was a red, but we didn't have any. We didn't have any uh, team growing up. The North Stars left. Okay, so there's that gap between the Minnesota Wild and the North Stars. And so I was – I mean, I didn't – I mean, I watched a little bit of pro hockey. I watched a little more college, but I was a huge Nicholas Lindstrom fan. I loved him. I thought he – I mean, I still think he's the greatest defense that's ever played, but uh, I'm a huge – him and Sergey Fedorov. You know, like, I've heard they're just – they're Red Wings guys, but Nick Lindstrom is my guy. Like, he is – I got – you know, I, you know what? Someone actually got me a, a Lindstrom puck. From, someone in Vegas got me a Lindstrom signed puck. And I honestly, I care. I, it comes with me everywhere. I was like, this is the coolest present of all time. <laughs> that's, I mean, they were an unbelievable, yeah, that's, unbelievable that's team. Yeah. That's the dynasty. Yeah. The definition of for sure. Uh, all right. So all time favorite food. And, and I kind of associate this with what's the favorite, like what, your favorite restaurant. Like where is something like when you're in that town, whether it be, Minnesota or if you're up in Canada or if you're in Vegas again like what what is like the the, the place you gotta eat like what what's your favorite restaurant oh. one of them one of them at least oh. so it, it's hard for me to say because of my last meal versus what like I love steak okay but I think that I, I try so many different things it's like I love making my own so it's like do I pick a steakhouse I don't eat a lot of pastas and carbs, but if I was going to pick something like a last meal, it would be a thousand percent an Italian meal, you know, chicken <laughs> parms and a little bit of st steak and, uh, you know, pasta, the whole nine yards, that kind of hearty homey meal. Um, that's hard because I, it, it, honestly, it depends on the city I'm in. Go to Vancouver, always eat sushi. You know, like it's every time, uh, you know, I go to I have a, in New York city, there's a great, uh, the Cuban restaurant that I really like. I mean, but New York's kind of got a little bit of everything, so that's hard to say one or the other. Nashville, I'm always going to get ribs. You know what I mean? So it's – and wherever I am, you know, it's like we're – like Dallas smoked something. You know, something yeah. that's been out at a barbecue or, you know, whatever, something like that. So it's – it kind of depends for me. I, I, I have actually – I have a list on my phone. Brooks Orpik told me to do this. It was like NHL places, cities, and where to go. So, like, I would all scroll through it and be like, oh, that's right. This is that place in Edmonton. This is that place in, in uh, Arizona that we really liked. And so uh, that's been a huge help. So I usually go back to that thing quite a bit. <laughs> so you, you mentioned you love steak. What's the best steak you've had in Vegas? Can you, can, can you cue me in on that? And maybe and oh. it, was, it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, the fanciest. But, like, what's yeah. the spot that you remember and you're like, wow, like, this is uh, – this is it for me. This is a great steak that I can just get on the rag. And so my favorite place to eat in Vegas is Piero's. And they yeah, have a great yeah. – so that's, that's a little bit of Italian that I really like. And it also has got a really good steak as well. Um, their veal parm is ridiculous, so that's the reason why it's hard for me not to get that. I usually have my gal get that and I'll just eat some of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean – Ah, man. See, again, I like to cook my own steaks. So, like, I don't, like, go out to a steakhouse as, a steakhouse as much. I'd rather go out to sushi, go out to Italian, go out to okay. the Greek or something like that. So, like, what's, I would, so, what's the key ingredient to your steak, then? What's something that has to be on it? Yeah, you have to make sure that you uh, – uh, 
like marinate or season it long and have it room temperature long before you're gonna cook it. That's the biggest thing that I've found. I mean, during quarantine, not to go on steak, but McNabb and Revo, because I spent, it was just four of us. We just kind of spent it in our own little bubble during when we couldn't get into the rink last year. And, or two years ago, I guess it is now. Yeah, um, I'm fine, man. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was myself, White Cloud, Evo, and Naver, and just kind of our group. That was it. Like, we worked out together, trained together, hung out together. We didn't see anybody else because we couldn't. Because uh, those are all the guys that are kind of living in the same area. And those two started uh, smoking briskets back and forth at each other. And they were just saying it's the biggest thing was marinating, brining, and things like that. So that's the thing I'd say is not picking it up an hour before you eat it. It's trying to get in the day before, salt it, you know, let it sit for a while. It really helps all that. And letting it rest is the biggest thing. Letting well, it rest I, after it's been on the grill? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's hard. Man. That's very hard. <laughs> I mean, I always, I always trim off a couple pieces on the side just so I can eat quick, but the main, the, the, grand, the main one I let sit for a while. Cool. Um, all right, so let's talk music real quick. Uh, all-time favorite band, favorite artist. I feel like I talked about this a little bit with Jansen uh, about how hockey players seem to they, they tend to like put music on the back burner. I don't want to say back burner, but I feel like it's a common answer to be like, oh, what's ever on, what, whatever's on. But then you got the one guy in the locker room that's like, yo, I'm the DJ. But yeah. I, I want to find the middle area. Like, what, what, what is some music that you're into? What are some artists and bands? What, what do you listen to? Like, when you're getting ready or when you're just chilling, whatever you're doing. Okay, so all these are – it's interesting because I'm very uh, time or place sensitive. When I cook, I listen to reggae. I don't know why. I did it when I was in Hershey and I was playing the minors. And I, don't, I think my roommate put it on one day and I forever have – ever always cooked to reggae i don't know what it is it just makes me feel happy when i'm cooking to reggae um i had a i mean it's hard for me to say like one thing my i love classic rock it's easy to put on anytime country is okay like i like it like i went to sam hunt this year at a concert i didn't really know any of his stuff at least until i got there and i knew it but i had a great time i can pretty much like any music you know but if i had to really nail it down oh man that's tough yeah, all time favorite. Okay, all time favorite song, band. Like, there's got to be something. I like, love Zach on. Brown band, though. That's the thing. Okay. Like, I, I'm a huge Zach Brown band guy. Like, you know, I, you can always listen to it, always be in a good mood. You know, and he's great. I, I, I really like because uh, I kind of run at high steam usually a lot. And so it kind of calms me down a little bit. That Latin music, I, which I really liked, like salsa music. I don't know if that was like, I, I always liked it when I was, a, I had a foreign exchange uh, buddy of mine when I was in high school. Loved it. Got me into salsa. He was from Colombia. And going to Vegas made it so much easier, too, because it's always on the radio, too. <laughs> so it made it easy for me to listen to it. I like that stuff. I, I don't know. I like the <laughs> melody and beat, the tang, the twangs, and things like that. Something more upbeat, right? Yeah. It sounds like that's kind of like the general theme here. Is it just yeah, yeah, put, yeah. put you in a good mood. I, I, I'm very impressionable, too. Like, I like to put on something that's – it's going to put me in a good mood while I'm, while yeah. I'm cooking or while I'm, you know, barbecuing, yeah. pre prepping all that food. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I, I appreciate you coming on, chatting hockey with me. It's just been awesome, dude. Um, everyone be sure to check out Short Side Company. Uh, you heard it from the man himself. He, it, uh, he can, if he can <laughs> deliver it to you, he will. <laughs> Yeah, I can, I will, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, we, I wish you the best of luck on the new team, man, in the upcoming season. We're all really stoked that life is getting somewhat back to normal. Fans uh, are going to be in the stands. People will actually see you play in Winnipeg. Uh, yeah. Mom and dad are excited. I mean, my family's excited, right? Like, I'm close to home now. It's easy to drive up. So, I think Winnipeg's going to see a lot of the Schmidt clan you know, in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. So yeah, and, and we talked a little bit about that, uh, you know, the atmosphere being a big thing. I, I feel like if there was a team that could resemble the the atmosphere that T-Mobile has in Vegas, it would be Winnipeg with the wideouts and just they the fans. Well. So they, I'm, they very, good job. I'm very excited for you, man. I'm excited to watch this upcoming season. I appreciate you coming on, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And, uh, hey, <laughs> to the goon life. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Take care, bud. Thank you.